Hello and welcome. You are on Stat News Global. I am Nitin Gokhale, and with me is a special guest joining me from Colombo, the capital of Sri Lanka, Admiral Jayanath Colombage, who is also a professor, by the way, a former Navy commander, and now Foreign Secretary of Sri Lanka, steering uh, Sri Lanka's foreign policy uh, on the global stage after a very distinguished career in the Navy. Very well, warm welcome to you, Admiral, uh, to uh, Strat News Global, and uh, Thank you. it's a pleasure to uh, have you here. Thank you, Nitin. It's great to be with you on your show. Uh, I'm delighted to be with you. Thank you very much. So, you know, uh, we've been meeting in seminars and conferences and all that, but this is the first formal interaction that we are going to do on camera. So let me start with uh, the latest uh, yeah. important decision that has been taken uh, by uh, India and Sri Lanka and particularly the uh, Sri Lankan cabinet on awarding the uh, contract for the West Container Terminal of the Colombo port to uh, India and Japan and of course uh, the company nominated by India and maybe uh, from Japan. How do you see this development now because there were a lot of uh, to and fro, there were a lot of apprehensions about East Container Terminal, West Container Terminal. So if you could uh, just throw some light on that decision. Well, I, I can say we are relieved to see that a decision has been firmly made uh, to give this to, uh, 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 well, I, I mean, to begin with you, I think it's always wrong to say we are giving something to India, we are giving something to China, or we are giving something to Japan. You know, that has a different connotation. So let us not even use a country. You know, it is Adani is not India, of course, it is an Indian company. So it is, I think, right decision at the right time because we uh, kind of upset India when, when, when the president was compelled, I, I use the word compelled, uh, because of the public pressure coming from the trade union uh, not to give the East Container Terminal to anyone. And I think India should not take it as an attack against India. I mean, this is not the case. But, you know, uh, India and Sri Lanka are the two oldest democracies in, the, in this region, of course, in the world for that matter. So the people's power matter. And then, of course, the president was very keen to go ahead with that decision, which actually entered in 2019 by the previous government, that the sure. East Container Terminal will be given to uh, a, a company from Japan and company from uh, India. But then he had to give in to the pressure or the people's power. But then I think he had the option that the West Container Terminal, which is much longer, much wider, it has more space, and it is not built. I mean, it is, you know, it is something which has to come out. Uh, so the total ownership. And I think another step is on the same line of the CICT. That is also important. Uh, I mean, if you can see that presi president had to actually break slightly away from the initial pledge that the control of any national strategic asset will not be given to an outside organization. And that was the case in the East Contender Terminal. Things were happening like 5149. But now here, I think in order to compensate for whatever the, you know, the issues which came between our uh, two people, so he has decided it will be the same line as the CICT, which means approximately 85% to 15. So I think at the end of the day, uh, to me, this is a better bargain and a better deal for India and Japan, I mean, who are interested in this. And rightly so, we need Indian presence here. We need Japanese presence here. We're nowhere in our country we should say this is only for a country. It should be open thing. We need more investment to come, more countries to participate in our economy. So we are really delighted uh, to hear the good news. Now, you know, now the paper is there, but then how we have to translate that into action. And sooner the better. Sooner the, real is world begins now. the real world begins now, actually. Yeah, the real world is beginning now. Because you see, in this part of the world, is in, in India is the same. I have also lived in India for a long time. Success nullifies criticism. People True. always criticize whenever something started by the government, you know, opposition or some political party, they always start with a criticism. But when things happen, when jobs are created, when the country then a throughput goes out, uh, goes up. When the rating of the port goes up, when the economy is moving around the port, the criticism will stop. So that is, as you said, the real work start now. So we need to really work, put our effort, and to make it happen. 
Absolutely. And I think it is in keeping with the president's uh, personal uh, initiative uh, that he had mentioned to me in his first interview in uh, November 2019, where he had said he's looking for investment and not for loans uh, mm -hmm. from different countries for progress and development of Sri Lanka. I think uh, I, we should look forward and uh, look ahead of how India and Sri Lanka and Japan and other countries can actually uh, cooperate and develop Sri Lanka into a economy that is worth talking about in this region. But moving on, uh, Admiral, uh, this is more up your alley of your actually the former avatar, the NSA's mechanism, the trilateral mechanism between India, Sri Lanka and Maldives. There was this meeting uh, that happened uh, in uh, Colombo uh, recently of the three NSA's. Uh, and now you have a secretariat which is uh, now been activated in Colombo. What does that entail? If you can uh, tell some details about it. Well, you know, the national security advisor level discussions were started somewhere in 2011 and it continued till about 2014 when the last meeting was held. And that was between India, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. Even at that time, the talk was there to expand this maritime domain awareness concept towards Mauritius and Seychelles. And even now, that concept is pretty much alive. And we now even want to look towards Bangladesh to include the Bay of Bengal as well. Unfortunately, this very important national security advisor level talk stopped for a while, like five years, nothing really moved. But I'm so happy and I'm so proud that I could really play a role in reinvigorating. Of course, it was uh, India who suggested, let's do it. So I took the, uh, the task to my heart and I had the 100% blessing from my president and we could have an excellent meeting after a lapse of nearly five years. Now, in that meeting, many things were discussed about security. And one critically important factor is now the NSA level talks have moved away or moved much broader than the maritime security. It encompasses security. This is what we need for the region, not necessarily maritime security. It is security, no. right? So in that uh, meeting, there was the suggestion to have a secretariat. In fact, this even this discussion was there in 2014 mm -hmm. and the secretariat was to be set up in Maldives but then of course this time the proposal came okay it's all right let's have it in Colombo and so we are delighted like we have been able to establish this secretariat for national security level a tripartite uh, talk or tri uh, triparty discussion in the, in in Colombo. Uh, now we have a telephone number, we have email address, we have a logo, we have a letterhead, uh, we have a dedicated naval officer sitting there. And of course, on that particular day when we launched, we only had the defense strategy from India and defense strategy from Maldives. But our hope is that there will be two people from India and Maldives permanently sitting in this secretariat. And as I said, now it's a time to move away from merely maritime security and talk other things which are impringing. Because now, Nitin, you know very well, the, the security is not limited to hard maritime security anymore. It is much more encompassing, much more broader, much more comprehensive. So we now have a platform between the three neighbors, India, Mal Mal Maldives and Sri Lanka to discuss all matters related to security. And that will be a, a very, I mean, we have taken a great step in the right direction. And now we must try to expand to include the other friendly countries in the region. And now no one should see this as an inclusive mechanism to prevent anyone else coming into the region or using, not that. Here, yes. Indian Ocean should be free. It is not directed no, no one. against Yeah, not against anyone. It is merely the neighborhood, the neighbors getting. Because you see, if you look at India, Maldives and Sri Lanka, it is critically important for all our three nations to maintain the sanctity of the region, maintain Absolutely. the peace and stability of the Indian Ocean, at least this region. It is important for us because we all, even, even I always believe India, although you are not an island, but in maritime sense, you are an island. You know, you have 7,500 kilometers of coastline. I mean, exactly. that's huge, right? So we have taken the right uh, step in the right direction. It is critically important. Now we, we have a platform. We have the blessing 
we have the blessing of the leadership the political leadership the national security advisor level so this is the time we must not miss this opportunity to move forward that's that's great to know and i think it will move forward as uh, you you've said rightly uh, but now let's come to uh, the uh, this month uh, which is critical uh, for uh, sri lanka and the neighborhood the unhrc the un human rights council uh, is in session right now and there is a resolution uh, that has uh, been taken up uh, about sri lanka on sri lanka or the sri lankan situation now here uh, what is sri lanka stand on this resolution one and uh, two what do you expect india to do uh, in this uh, situation or the circumstances that we, uh, we find ourselves in yeah i mean to answer the nitin's question uh, what do we want or what are we planning to do in the resolution we vehemently reject the high commissioner's report it is biased unsubstantiated you know unrealistic because no one really visited the sri lanka during the last year and it was a desktop report of course maybe from some shadow reporting going from here and the tamil diaspora certain segment of diaspora pressure so this report is unrealistic very biased and very unfair right this is not fair for a self respecting independent sovereign nation not let it be sri lanka let it be any other country i don't think a body like that has the right to infringe on the domestic internal matters of a country the way that the report is produced uh, this time so that means we have vehemently opposed we have made our reservation uh, felt we have made our observation in writing now that step was done and when the high commissioner's report was tabled on the 25th of last month 21 countries spoke on behalf of sri lanka this is a great feeling this is a sure. great feeling why because we now know there are like minded countries today it is sri lanka tomorrow it may be india day after tomorrow it may be another country it may not be india soon india is a powerful country powerful economy powerful military right not many people would want to meddle with india right but still you see we are all developing countries so today it is us tomorrow it may be another country so we were delighted uh, when 21 countries i mean even it went beyond our expectation now in that 21 countries nothing this is the fact that this is the crux of the matter we need to understand all yeah. these 21 countries are from the political south right no western country spoke on behalf of sri lanka now 21 spoke on behalf of us nearly 15 spoke against sri lanka or in favor of the resolution all 15 except solomon islands uh, uh, from the west global political north political west right so what does this mean what does this really mean now isn't this, this old, uh, admiral isn't this the old um, uh, trend uh, if you see from 2009 onwards when uh, sri lanka has been targeted or even during the war this has been the trend uh, of the western countries i don't think uh, we should be surprised about it i'm sure you are not surprised about the stand taken by some of these powerful european countries or at least the uh, european countries who are on the on, on the un uh, hrc uh, but uh, here is uh, where uh, the encouragement to sri lanka comes from like you mentioned 21 countries uh, speaking in favor uh, and india being uh, sri lanka's closest neighbor india has had a mixed uh, record as far as the un hrc um, stand is concerned or stand in the un hrc with visa uh, visa sri lanka is concerned have you had uh, chats with indian um, interlocutors and indian me i'm sure what do you expect as i mentioned from india we would like to know that yeah nitin you are spot on we would have been delighted if india was among this 22 right i mean we had 21 if india was within the 22 we will be the happiest country right but unfortunately for whatever the reason i mean we are not debating that we are not uh, you know leveling any uh, accusation but india we feel you know one thing is very critically important that we need the regional solidarity now in this region we have four countries in the human right council pakistan india nepal and bangladesh 
Pakistan is supporting us big time. No two words about it. The other three mm. countries, India, Nepal, and Bangladesh. Nepal supported us in the talk, in the discussion. Bangladesh and uh, uh, Bangladesh mm. decided to stay away. India decided to stay away. Not really stay away. They made a commit uh, comment, but it was not in favor of Sri Lanka. So right now, our uh, sincere hope is that India will support Sri Lanka in this hour of need. In fact, Nitin, the first letter my president wrote to the outside leaders was to the Mod Narendra Modi ji, right? And first meeting he had was with the Indian High Commissioner in Colombo and requested support for our effort. So therefore, we are very much hopeful. And I was following, uh, you know, things very closely. Indian foreign minister is talking about the world is one family. If the world is one family, as Honorable Jayashankar said, we are your immediate neighbor. We are in your doorstep, right? So no. we have to have you on our side. This is my, I mean, very humble request, very hopeful request that, uh, you see, and in that speech, he talks about, you know, this interference is bad. You know, we have to have our own method of finding solutions. And also, I know India is moving a some kind of a resolution against appointing these special rapporteurs, right? We feel the same thing. We feel don't interfere among us. Let us handle our problems on our own. Right. Let us do it through discussion. What we need is solidarity. We are going through a very difficult time because of COVID, because the economic impact of COVID is extremely painful. What we yes. need is to battle, combat COVID and overcome the economic situation that we have. We don't need to waste our time on this. But here, unfortunately, Nitin, what we observe, we can argue until the moon shine from the other side. What we observe is weaponizing and politicizing of human rights to target a small country. Of course, as you said, it is not new. We have been going through this for a while and it is continuing, but at least we are happy at this stage more and more countries are thinking like Sri Lanka. Of course, when the voting day comes, it will again be a slightly a change scenario because the voting in the Human Rights Council is not based on argument, not based on facts, not based on perception or belief. It is purely based on blocks. It is purely yes. based on influence. Right. Absolutely. So it can be a different ball game, but we are happy about the support. Now, again, there was this uh, the, the co-group, the so-called co-group table resolution. It was discussed mm -hmm. for last two days. We were humble. So many countries spoke against those operative paras, preambular paragraph. And right. sometimes we are just joking here when we listen. Oh, we see. Oh, we see another Sri Lanka talking to Sri Lanka. You know, right. that is the feeling. So we yeah, so humbly Yes, I, I, I have understood the uh, issue and I think uh, India uh, perhaps is uh, waiting and weighing its options. Uh, we still don't know what will happen on the voting day. Uh, my um, you know, One of the insights that I want from you on this issue, India has been pressing for something like uh, you know the reconciliation uh, on the Tamil issue, the uh, implementation of the 13th Amendment. Uh, and what has been uh, Sri Lanka's response to uh, India's demand? Because it has been reiterated by External Affairs Minister Jay Shankar and uh, by, I'm sure by the High Commissioner. So I think I'm sure you've had some response to that over these past few months. Well, uh, Nitin, to be very honest with you, we are discussing about this. You see, the 13th Amendment came about in 1987. So it's about 33 years old now. And, you know, it was created for two reasons. Number one, to stop violence. Number two, to develop the war-torn provinces. Neither achieved. Neither of them achieved through the uh, the, the 13th Amendment. Of course, provincial councils were created, chief ministers were appointed, a uh, certain amount of power devolved, except the police and the land powers. All powers are now uh, vested, including health and education, uh, vested with the provincial council. Unfortunately, the last, the previous government uh, did not conduct the provincial council election. And there was a court, and now it is preventing the progress of the provincial council election. The government is very keen to conduct provincial council elections. 
but i right. share with you nitin it is the main tamil political party the tna is against that because they oh. have a fear that they may lose the power in the provincial council in the new dynamics right you know yeah. how long they can carry the same slogan of this you know the base Basically, the rollover slogan of LTTE without developing the region. No, people want development. You know, if you take uh, Nitin, the people in this country, whether you are a Tamil, Sinhala or a Muslim, there are five basic things people want. You need a job, you need a house, you need health facilities, you need education for your children and you need security. Security to live in a peaceful society. President, I have seen Nitin personally, he is keen on delivering these five. But the important factor is without thinking of a particular community. That is True. the beauty of it. Right? He is a president for all, all of Sri Lanka. He is yeah, he's step by, I'm the president for all Sri Lankan and he has lived to that word to date. And every time he's talking, he's briefing, he say, don't think on ethnic lines, develop the whole country. Right. When he said develop 100,000 kilometers of road, he said it has to be across the country. When he said 35 percent of more pipe borne clean drinking water to people, it means the whole country. So our approach is not really to think of a special community, but to develop the whole country based on those five uh, requirements. So we are mindful of India's concern about the 13th Amendment because we whether we like it or not we know india was behind 13th amendment and they must be feeling that it should be implemented carried out but you see our constitution amended 20 times i think it's high time that we have a new constitution but understanding the real dynamics of the country real needs of the people you see we should not have another constitution and make things worse we must be really using all the lessons learned and best practices in the world and come out with a constitution which will pave the way for more harmony, more unity and peaceful development of our country. True. In fact, I think you put it in the right perspective of the change dynamics and where we are after so many years of the 13th Amendment uh, that was introduced in 1987. But let me come to more uh, practical and uh, mundane matters if you want, but uh, also important. How has been, and this is my last question to you, uh, how has been uh, Sri Lanka's response? It has been lauded, uh, I know, in a uh, couple of places uh, internationally, uh, response to the COVID emergency or the COVID pandemic. And how are you dealing with it, the after effects of the pandemic itself? Well, uh, I think Sri Lanka has done extremely well in COVID response. In fact, we did too good in the first place, right? We, we, we were one of the top two, two to three countries in the world uh, because our figures were very little. Our Absolutely. death rate was 0.03. Our recovery rate was 96% at that time. And we had very few cases. And after the first wave was over, we had a period, a lull period for about three months. We did not have a single case and we were overjoyed, buoyant about it. But unfortunately, the second wave came in uh, in September. But now we have gone up to 85,000, but still 80,000 people have been cured and gone. And the death rate is 0 0.5. So not even one, only half yes. a percent. I mean, 0 0.5. So we are doing it very well. And I have to mention, we are so grateful to India for giving us 500 doses, 500,000 doses of AstraZeneca vaccine as a gift, right? It is, I think, called uh, vaccine mitre. Three, I, I can't remember exactly. It is a yes, beautiful yes. Gift, uh, vaccine, Maitri. Mm -hmm. You see, when you have a population of like 1.34 billion, when your people needed that most, you decided you will share half a million with us. And believe it or not, Nitin, you know, we are all beneficiaries of that half a million. And that help, of course, the second half a million came uh, a few days ago. But still, we depend on the donation given by India is great. Of course, India donated many other things as well. They sent plain loads of medicine, plain loads of various equipment needed for health in Sri Lanka. This is really great. So we have been doing very well. 
unfortunately the second wave was little uncontrollable but now it is the curve is coming down again the figures are becoming less now the vaccine is rolled out uh, mainly thanks to india and now things are getting back so we are opening slowly and we have opened uh, we have offered to india to open our air travel between our two countries for various purposes for medical studies business even tourism now we are waiting to see the response from the civil aviation authority of india how best we can you know do this uh, in in a enhanced manner so we are doing well and i think we really are grateful to india of course world health organization is also due to give us some more vaccine but the vaccine has become the most important commodity in the world today even if you True. have money even if you have influence the the like the serum institute they have to produce the vaccine and they have to meet all the demands so we do understand that so we are hopeful that the things will be better and then we are free to travel to each other like we did before and indeed and in fact i am looking forward that uh, when the air traffic opens uh, to visit uh, sri lanka once more and meet you in person thank you very much admiral for your time and being so candid about various issues it's been a great pleasure having you for the first time on our program but we'll hope to continue this uh, frequently and occasionally whenever uh, the occasion demands thank you very much for your time thank you nitin great to be with you looking forward to welcome you here thank you